First I want to do is plug uh, the erotic poetry reading. It's at the corner, the Earl Stanley Gardner building in the corner of California and Maine. It's tomorrow night at 7.30. Friday and Marsha are the hosts. Okay, so what, what Phil and I are going to do is we're going to do some love poems, like in duet, passing them back and forth. And uh, we ordinarily don't write love poems. We were forced to do so <laughs> by a situation we were invited to read both together. And we were saying, oh, you know, we're separate individuals. Isn't that too bad they invite us to read together just like we were a pair? And then we found out the reading was called Enamored. <laughs> so we, uh, we wrote these poems. We wrote these poems. Uh, and my, I'm going to go first, and this first poem is one I was just like teasing him that I was going to write. It's, I, I kept telling him, I'm going to write a poem called This Is My Chance. And I didn't get it written in time for the uh, event in February that we did this for, but I did get it done tonight for you all. This is my chance to untangle the riddle, and he is a bramble. An enigma, a dew-eyed ramble, mouth full of quips, both the bird and the bush, a brother and a briar, a metabolic frolic, an off-kilter wallet, able to pound out, scratch out, peck out. He's no tabula rasa. He's written up, written off into thousands of sunsets, black and white and red all over. He's the noisiest quiet you'll ever want to know. My big yes, my full court press, cherry, a skin flint with lexicon, but rash on syntax. No warrior, yet nature built him compact, the better to swing a battle axe. He told me that on our second date. <laughs> A stray molecule yearning to burn in the bonds of delight. He's my snake bit baby, my history of the blues, my personal fuse box, a witness, a litmus test, a stroll in a dog park. No saint, but oh, that guy is something fresh about a bird. <laughs> I drag my groggy butt to the kitchen and make coffee. <laughs> We're still on her elementary school teacher's time schedule. And it works. Out the door, scoop the papers off the driveway, put the graham crackers on a plate, some time Mexican sweet bread, fill the cups with the bitter, the sweet, the dark, the warm. Then back to bed, reacquaint ourselves slowly with paper pathos and the heat of each other. She starts with the times, meet with the star, exchange, end with the comics, negotiate another day. This ritual, this comfort, is our Japanese tea ceremony. It's become holy, our daily sacrament. We start the day together. Enamored, to bend with heat, not knowing who the smith, silver smith, black smith, fire smith, who the matter, metal, molten glass, to twist, turn, rest form, struggle with the lover, not knowing, to trust darkness and touch, to make the rot body an instrument, orgiastic organ, ritual, sacrifice, to build faith and burn it down in a bonfire enamored, to inflame, smelt, fuse a burnt-in pattern, a mark, a voluptuary disease of the spleen caused by excess, to sweep the tongue along flesh, Swoop, descend, 
cry out ravished by fire, merge into shadow, smoke, plumage of a great bird, black wings spread to breathe into those eyes, green agates radiating kindness. Her eyes. It's that space above the glasses, a place where there is no lens. Maybe that is where she sees me, us looking at us on a piece of paper, or maybe on a phone by a ginkgo tree in Long Beach. Those eyes fill me with happiness as she gazes, as she gazes, child intense wonder. I still remember that photo taken many years ago, and although I have no idea where it is, that image floats, blissful, enraptured, with me still. And when she gazes at me, eyes focused above her glasses, I know I am loved. Nude descending a staircase. <laughs> Except it's a hallway. And no descent involved. No loss of elevation. Your warm palate, your bright palate swimming toward me. The hanging committee rejected Marcel Duchamp's painting on the grounds that a nude never descends the stairs. <laughs> a nude reclines. And you too would have been rejected by cubists. Naked, you're as rounded as a nautilus, pink as the lining of a conch, your sex withdrawn into its sheath. In Duchamp's painting, the nude is a melange of light and dark, a being more peaked as he approaches the edges, the in-betweens. And you are peaked, too, in the word's meaning of wounded as you approach your own shadow. But this morning, coming down the hallway, turning into our bedroom, all the shapes organic, Sea cucumber, brittle star, nothing cubist at all. Yes, today you're free, a natural, a curved and rosy nude stepping down the hallway, and I avert my eyes, my hands two blind men, and you're suddenly an elephant. Very like a wall, says one hand. Very like a rope, says the other. No, a hard melon a bag of kiwis, a smooth stone with the sun inside. <laughs> I pass her on Telephone Road. She is purposeful in motion, a tan hat enveloping her head and wrapped in a brown coat, her comfort jacket. There is no place to stop here, so I speed by to home, park the car, walk back to meet her. Like Madeline, she leans into her walk around the dog park run, apprising, determining. She has adopted my old coat. It swims a bit on her, but I love that it is hers, keeps her warm, protects her from the wind. This jacket also comforts me every time she wears it. Say nothing. Whatever I want, the world will take away from me. I thought about it that way. Stake out boundaries, build walls. Don't trumpet good fortune in white rooms. Don't put true love out there as a proposition. Fate adores sending a rogue wave to capsize your little skiff just when the weather seems cloudless. <laughs> Cuidado, my comadre used to say to me, the lady might drop by. 
You could get La Visita if you don't watch out. My strategy? Say nothing. So I never dared be the moon to his sun, my scarred white stone to his fire. No, we were both wordless. Though water's not mute, but conversational. The murmur of water's ordinary. A husband driving home from work, turning onto his own street, just as the light goes watery violet. And the gurgle, the steady slap of the heart is water. That elaborate pump I listened to, my ear curved against his breastbone. And inside, a liquid fist clenches and opens. My sister once hired a dowser for a barren plot she owned on the edge of the Sonora. And oh, how the wellow bucked and quivered in his hands, diving for the hidden spring. A branch, machete struck from its limb, tough enough to remember, even severed, soft enough to sob for water. One body to another, what's between them at sea. The wordless drift of interior currents, our two bodies only rarely glinting their tie-dyed silks of water. All that wet splendor. Should I be saying this? <laughs> There is the energy of you that flies around the room with a beauty, a confusion, a clarity, a mystery. Of course I don't understand, but I'm enthralled just the same. This little bit of you that I do get has made me love you. This time with you is unbelievable, a preciousness, a joy. I am always amazed, grateful that you are here with me. Sometimes awake at night, I know with certainty you'll be the first to leave. Wonder if I'll ever forget that nimbus round your form, that russet glint, the gold of low light trembling as wind trembles the shadows in the garden mornings, all the same problems still there, fluttering most strongly at the outer edge, but solid those shadows at their center, the dust drags us in, gravity so dense no light or wind can enter. We are hidden then from each other. Inside one of those places, a dog laps up beer at Christmas time. Everyone laughs because it's not funny. Inside another, a 12-year-old with flat eyes, locker key dangling round her neck. This girl left out, frozen. Sometimes her name is nothing can be done about it. I know the fall, the pit, the harm, no truth can touch, not even you. And yet you roll towards me, light, silvery in our moon sight, stars quivering their damp chaos, their slow whirl, and twine me to the curve of your body, half awake in the tangle, you understand, even drowsing, the refuge of your arms. How is it possible your love breathes me in and out? This is no question, it's a cry of joy. We hold hands, walking on the beach, in the park, as we arrange our lives, bargain with the chaos. We hold hands at the movies, of course, reaching across the space between us at the theater, poetry readings in Little Tokyo. Sometimes there are variations, like her hooking an arm through mine as we walk from the car into this room. It is not always a conscious act. Sometimes I find our hands joined and don't remember 
who touched who first. We hold hands like otters, adrift on this earth, fingers entwined, so we don't drift apart. Thank you. I'm in love with you. Um. <laughs>